Good evening, YouTube. It's a wonderful evening here in Little Rock on the uh, Maverick Transportation Campus. It's about 70 degrees and it's a little after 7 o'clock. And today is the end of uh, day one of orientation. Uh, I'm going to try and talk about it here some, tell you guys what went on and uh, so you can know what to expect. <clears throat> as I've said previously, these videos are mostly for experienced drivers as that's the uh, the perspective that I'm coming into so first thing I got up at uh, 5 30 this morning took a shower got ready to go and got over to the training center at uh, 6 45 uh, just in time for them to uh, get set up and start cooking uh, or setting up breakfast it was catered in uh, breakfast today was uh, scrambled eggs ham steaks sausage biscuits and gravy as well as coffee and uh, orange juice and water and soda pop if that's what you like for breakfast um, they went through and told us a little bit about uh, what to expect out of the meals. Um, one of the biggest things they wanted to let us know is that, uh, that you're only allowed either one bottle of water or one soda pop at each meal. You can drink all the coffee and juice that you want, but only one bottle or one soda can. Apparently it's too expensive compared with everything else. But breakfast was pretty good. At least it was hot and uh, there was plenty of it. There was even, I'm surprised there was any left over. Uh, then they formed everybody up to get a, get a good group of what was going on. Uh, in the orientation class that I'm in uh, this week, there's 31 people, uh, 29 men, two women. And my little segment of the experience group is only eight drivers. Uh, there's uh, youngest uh, driver has only got six months of previous OTR experience and the oldest has got like about 25 years of OTR experience and he happens to uh, have worked for Maverick before uh, matter of fact if I understand him correctly this is his fourth time to come back to Maverick over the years and he says he wants to finish off here apparently he keeps leaving to uh, do other stuff like oil field work and things like that so to give a kind of a brief rundown, talk about some of the things that went on today. Uh, after breakfast, well, they broke us up into our two classes and we went to separate classrooms. The experienced guys go into a small classroom. It's really small, maybe seats 12 people tops. And even with eight people in it, it felt like it was, uh, it was claustrophobic. Uh, the first things we did is we processed our personal information, uh, our driver's licenses and our social security cards and things like that. Got those into the computer system so they could uh, finish verifying all of our stuff. We also did our what's called our electronic signatory, signatory um, or signature, depending on how you want to put it, uh, for the system. Uh, that way, in, as you go through the training process and you have to uh, sign documents and acknowledgements and evaluations and things that they give you as you go along, you sign them electronically, that way you're not, I guess, wearing out your hand in a pen and then having to scan them all. So you get it just, to, just a one click after that to electronically sign. I made notes based on what we did because it was a lot today, so there's no way I could remember it all. Um, after we did the ID paperwork, uh, we got back together as one big class again, all 31 of us, uh, for a, I guess a speech or of welcome from the uh, director of training and orientation. And he gave us a, a nice little talk about um, Maverick's expectations, um, called the Maverick way, the way they want it. Uh, done and have what they expect of us as drivers and what we as drivers should expect of Maverick It lasted about 30 minutes. It was a pretty good pretty good little deal and um, It went off really well shortly after that we broke back up again uh, Took a short break and then we went to our own classrooms and started doing lots and lots of stuff uh, The first day is pretty much all day sitting in front of a computer uh, doing watching videos, taking evaluations, and then signing off on acknowledgments. I'm not even going to begin to cover them all, but basically they go for everything from welcome to Maverick to talking about benefits, um, your situations, what you're going to be doing, verifying your pay, what you're supposed to be making so they know that you're on the same page as what they are because literally everybody's making something different. There's four different divisions here, and each division has a different base pay, as well as the per, the per bonus pay, or a pay for performance bonus pay. And they talk about that pretty heavily to, so you understand exactly what is it, what it is, what is required in that. It, there's a list of about 20 items on that list that talk about all these things that go together to 
give you a point system and, it, and uh, the higher number of points you have, the more you get up to six cents additional per mile for the next quarter that you're working on. And they also talk about schedules, whether or not you're on glass or, or flatbed two weeks out, uh, one weekend home or every weekend home like me. I'm going to be in the Southwest Regional Division, so um, I'm expected to, for the most part, get home every weekend. And they talk about what happens if you don't, uh, you know, and pay for that. They also talked about accessorial pay, detention time, things like that. Everything that, that, that's important to a truck driver uh, that deals with money. Uh, once they did that, um, we took uh, uh, took a little break and then we moved into doing some other paperwork. We went ahead and prepped our DOT physical stuff, our, the new long form, as well as our medical cards because tomorrow is pretty much all day medical. And I'll talk about that of course tomorrow and I'll give a little brief view at the end here if I remember. And one of the other things that they did is they put, the, put us through a sleep apnea presentation. Apparently here at Maverick, everybody gets screened for sleep apnea um, every single driver and they have a criteria of what they're looking for and there's three big ones and one is neck size um, 18 inches or bigger uh, as well as your weight in relation to your BMI and there was one other thing I, I don't remember what it was I forget what it was oh if you're a snorer well I don't snore except for when my, my allergies are up my neck size is a 16, and I am a little bit overweight, but I'm not too far up the scale. I think if your BMI is over 35 or 36, they want you to do it. If they determine that you're eligible or a possible candidate of having sleep apnea, or however they want to put it, or you're susceptible to it, that's the correct word, then you will be required um, after your medical to take a sleep study test, and they have, a, they have portable sleep study machines, and basically they put you in bed and you wear like a glove or a watch or something with all these sensors on it, and then you go to sleep. And in the morning you get up and you give it to them, and then they read the date off of it, and it's just determined whether or not you have sleep apnea. If they determine you have sleep apnea, of course Maverick will be happy enough to sell you a machine. It's two hundred and seventy dollars, and they take it out ten dollars a week on your paycheck. If you don't have it, you're good to go. Um, I'm not really want to talk about sleep apnea all that much other than I think a lot of some people do have it It is a problem, but I think a lot of times for many trucking companies. Um, it's a racket uh, Especially if they have their own doctors say oh you got sleep apnea, you know, and they, they know real justifiable cause um, That's the only real thing that's concerned me about here being here at Maverick is because of that policy I've had sleep studies in the past and I've never tested positive positive of sleep apnea uh, but I do get up at night you know, to go to the bathroom because I have a tendency to drink too much water during the day. Um, and that's one of their criteria. Do you get up too much? So I'm not sure what I'm going to do if they make me take that test. But uh, I guess I'll take it and uh, see how good I can get through it. Um, after that, uh, we did uh, some stuff on their CDL portal, which is their uh, company driver uh, team portal. Uh, it's got it's where they keep all of your information. You're able to edit it once you're a full-time employee. Uh, at this time, they also issue your driver code and uh, your password uh, so you can use this system. This system tracks everything that you do and also keeps all of your information together. So once you get in that system, the first thing they do is they verify all your information, all your stuff on your application, um, do your W-2s, your direct deposits, your dependents, your benefits set up, emergency contacts, all that stuff. Um, there was only like two things we didn't do on it and they said we would do it later. And I know one of them was our medical certifications. Once that was done, we broke for lunch. And lunch today was uh, fried chicken with uh, to remember macaroni and cheese rolls um, and uh, salads and there was a lot of that matter of fact, there was so much of it that they told people that if they wanted it they could take stuff back to the hotel as leftovers to have for dinner I did and uh, I've already eaten it um, it was just as good the second time it was it was the first time so so far the catered meals are really really good but you gotta remember when you do come they don't do dinner they only do breakfast and lunch so you either have to go out or skip which they don't recommend you do anyway uh, but I'm not interested in leaving the property unless I have to uh, after lunch uh, we went back into the classroom and the rest of the afternoon was pretty much the same thing watching videos taking evaluation tests and signing off on releases the it, there was probably about 20 or so 
and they were all relatively easy. The videos are the most boring part. Some of them are quite old. Um, most of them are J.J. Keller videos, but there's videos about uh, the Cascadias um, and their capabilities as well as how Maverick has them spec They also have a, a couple of videos on the DEF system. Uh, for those people that don't know anything about DEF, especially I guess new drivers, I talked about they had a video on the inverter system, how it works in these trucks. From what I understand right now, every truck has an inverter and an APU. And the newer trucks, 25, 2015s and 2016s, have refrigerators in them as well. So I'm hoping I get one with a refrigerator because I don't want to have to carry around a portable refrigerator because uh, I like to keep my own food. I don't like to eat in truck stops. The, um, one of the other things we did, we took breaks in between us to do a couple other things. At one point, they herded everybody out to a hall, put us in alphabetical order to, based on our divisions, and we lined up and had our photos taken and our and for our ID cards, which we get on Thursday when they give us our job offers. In addition to that, they issued you a $50 MasterCard. Uh, it's not really a gift card. It's not really a credit card. It's kind of an in-between thing. It's by EFT. Basically, it's a $50 card. Uh, that you can use anywhere you want this week. They recommend that you use it relatively quickly. They don't say, they say you shouldn't get cash off of it because the cash advance fees are insane. Uh, but uh, I guess what most guys are gonna do is they're gonna go to Walmart and buy $50 worth of junk to use the card up. I'm gonna save mine for a little bit. You got 30 days from the day, day it's issued and then it expires. If you don't use it, you lose that $50. And it's not really a free $50 as part of your $1,000 orientation pay. So uh, in between that and doing all the rest of the videos, they pulled us out two at a time to go into the driver simulation suite uh, where you did a drive MPG test and basically what it is if you ever done a driving simulator before it's the three screens and you got a fully functional I guess front end of a truck with a driver's driver's seat and all that stuff and what they want you to do is you have to drive start from a dead stop in a rest area get on the interstate drive five miles and then uh, and stop before you get to the next rest area which five miles between rest areas is kind of crazy but oh well um, and you have to achieve at least a 6.7 miles per gallon average over that short time. Uh, of course, you can't use cruise control. There isn't even one on the screen. And they have it set to automatic mode, so at least you don't have to worry about shifting. And they're tid, it's a 10 speed thing. It's actually pretty easy. Uh, most guys average right at 6.7 or 6.8. There are a couple people who do fail. My understanding is one guy did not get it today. Um, I don't know what they're gonna do with him. Maybe he's going to be able to take it again. I have no idea. I got 7.71, but then again, I kind of cheated. I only went up to 56 miles an hour, maybe 57, and the maximum you can drive is, is 65. So the biggest hazard of the thing is the machine itself will make you nauseous. They want you to drive like you would normally drive, which means you're looking in the mirrors, digital versions of those mirrors, to check, make sure your load's going, make sure you're in the lane control, and make sure you're looking down the road. Unfortunately, if you... If you move your head too much and look too much, it makes you nauseous. And uh, they say that at least once a month, someone hurls all over the dash because they get they get motion sickness from it. So <clears throat> the key is to make sure that you're looking down the road and uh, not uh, focusing or moving around too much. And that was pretty easy. Um, once that was all done, they cut us loose um, about 6.30. So it was roughly, 12 hour day. Uh, the only thing uh, that uh, I have for today is uh, today I went ahead and did the homework that they issued us for tomorrow. I did it in the classroom before I left. And the homework consists of some mapping work using the Rand McNally, Ma uh, Ma Rand McNally Atlas. <clears throat> Cannot talk today. As well as doing some paper logs. And they're all pretty easy. You just got to you know, sit down and, and, and do the legwork on it because you can't use GPS's or anything. You gotta actually get out the book and look at the map and count it and all that good stuff. And they tell you what you're supposed to do on that log and you have to figure out, make sure you get it right. So that's pretty much it for day one. Uh, tomorrow is uh, supposed to be all medical, like I, I think I said. And uh, we have to be up in, in there at 6.30 in the morning. So I'm gonna, as soon as the sun goes down, I'm probably gonna hit it again tonight. So I hope uh, this has been informative for you. If it has been, please uh, click the subscribe button and uh, follow me. 
I'll see you on TTR if you're on there. So keep the shiny side up and 73s and have a good night.